Where is the country of Malta? Looking at the map of Europe, Malta lies just 93 kilometers, 58 miles, south of Sicily. Italy, in southern Europe, and roughly 300 kilometers, 186 miles, north from the North African coast. Malta is an island nation that consists of three islands, main island Malta, Gozo, and Comino. What is Valletta Malta known for? Valletta has many titles, all recalling its rich historical past. It is the modern city built by the Knights of St. John, a masterpiece of the Baroque, a European art city and a world heritage city. Today, it is one of the most concentrated historic areas in the world. Is Valletta worth visiting? The short answer is, you'd be missing out if you don't visit Valletta. Big time. Why? Even though it's one of the smallest capital cities in the world, covering less than one square kilometer of land, there's enough to see and do to easily fill three days. Is Valletta Malta safe? Overall risk, low. Generally, Malta is very safe to visit. It is among the safest countries in the European Union to travel to, but it has its dangers. Use your common sense and keep your valuables closely by your side, since the most common type of crime is petty theft. Is Malta part of Spain or Italy? It's been an independent country since 1964. Following 150 years as a British colony, Malta gained state independency in 1964, became a republic in 1974 and later part of the European Union in 2004. Is food expensive in Malta? Fortunately as well, Malta has an incredibly impressive restaurant scene, and it doesn't cost much to eat out while traveling to Malta on a budget. For a small snack or breakfast, consider heading to a local bakery where you can get a pastizzi for less than a euro. Is Malta expensive to visit? Malta is an expensive travel destination when you compare it with other European destinations like Bulgaria and even Barcelona, though it did fare well against Madrid. At an average cost of 55 euros per day, Malta was an expensive holiday, but it's well worth it to see this beautiful and underrated country. What language is spoken in Valletta Malta? The official languages of Malta are Maltese and English. Maltese, a language of Semitic origin written in the Latin script, is the national language of Malta. Over the centuries, it has incorporated many words derived from English, Italian and French. Italian is also widely spoken. Does Valletta have a beach? Although Malta's capital city of Valletta is a peninsula that is surrounded by the sea, there are no real, sandy, beaches in and around Valletta. The sea around Valletta is suitable for swimming, and there are a few spots around the city where people, mostly locals, go for a dip. Is Malta too touristy? Malta is no doubt quite the tourist magnet, especially in the summer. Trips to Comino are often more stressful than relaxing. Because of the amount of people on the tiny island and our airport and harbours are always overflowing with new people arriving. Do you tip in Malta? Tipping is customary in Malta, and a gratuity of between 5% and 10%, whenever good service has been provided is reasonable. However, if a service charge has already been included in the bill, a tip is not necessary. Is Malta famous for anything? As well as being famous for its diving, architectural sites, and festivals, Malta is also a popular film location in its own right. Malta's dramatic cliffs, stunning landscapes, and ancient buildings make it the perfect backdrop for many feature films and TV shows, particularly those aiming for an antiquated feel. What is the best month to visit Malta? Spring and early summer, April, May and June is the best time to visit Malta. The weather is not hot, sunny days and the nights are cool, and there are fewer tourists. Do I need a visa for Malta? Malta is a party to the Schengen Agreement. 
This means that U.S. citizens may enter Malta for up to 90 days for tourist or business purposes without a visa. Your passport should be valid for at least three months beyond your planned departure date. What is it like in Malta? Malta's climate is strongly influenced by the sea, and is typical of the Mediterranean. The islands have a very sunny climate with a daily average of 5 to 6 hours sunshine in midwinter to around 12 hours in summer. Winters are mild, and summers are hot, dry and very sunny. Is Malta a tax haven? Tax havens are places where super wealthy individuals keep money in offshore accounts for reasons that include, among others, tax avoidance. Most of the top tax havens are island nations like the British Virgin Islands, Samoa, and Malta. What is the nightlife really like in Malta? Nightlife on the islands is always bustling, even if the vibrant calendar of events gets leaner during some periods, there are always scores of clubs to visit, excellent wine bars and first-rate restaurants to try. What is Valletta Malta known for? Valletta has many titles, all recalling its rich historical past. It is the modern city built by the Knights of St. John, a masterpiece of the Baroque, a European art city, and a world heritage city. Today, it is one of the most concentrated historic areas in the world. How much income tax do you pay in Malta? Personal income tax rates. Income is taxable at graduated progressive rates, ranging from 0% to 35%. What is the legal drinking age in Malta? 17 years. The legal minimum drinking age in Malta is, in fact, 17 years. In Malta, people under the age of the 17th of May only be allowed in a club on condition that no alcohol is served on the premises. How many islands make up Malta? Three islands. The Maltese archipelago lies virtually at the center of the Mediterranean, 93 kilometers south of Sicily and 288 kilometers north of Africa. The archipelago consists of three islands, Malta, Gozo and Comino, with a total population of over 400,000 inhabitants occupying an area of 316 square kilometers. What's it like to live in Malta? Malta generally offers a decent and comfortable standard of living and is one of the most affordable countries to reside in, as compared to other European nations. The cost of living in Malta can differ depending on your lifestyle and where you choose to live. Generally, the expenses run low on the island. What you need to know about Malta Bells, yells and feasts, intel for the navel of the Mediterranean. It's crowded. The knights put Malta on the map. Don't follow the white taxes, they are bad news. Pastizzi is king. Bunnies are food, not pets. It's best not to talk politics. Malta has a church for every day of the year. Pica makes Malta go round. What religion is in Malta? Roman Catholic. The majority of the Maltese are Roman Catholic but many other religious denominations are also represented on the islands, with small, but well-established, and active communities. Who owns Malta Island? In 1800, the British took control over Malta, and the island initially became a British protectorate, and a colony a couple of years later. The British ruled for about 150 years, and Malta became independent in 1964. Ten years later the state of Malta became the Republic of Malta. Who brought Christianity to Malta? Apostle Paul. Christianity has almost 2,000 years of history in Malta. According to tradition, it was brought to the islands by none other than the Apostle Paul himself in around AD 60. What fruits grow in Malta? These include apples, apricots, bambanella, black mulberry, cherries, cherry plum, figs, loquats, melons, white mulberry, encetines, peaches, pears, plums, prickly pears, watermelon, grapes, jujube, carob and almond. What is Malta ethnicity? 
Malta's population is composed almost entirely of ethnic Maltese. The descendants of ancient Carthaginians and Phoenicians as well as of Italians and other Mediterranean peoples. What does Malta produce? Modern economy. The Maltese economy is dependent on foreign trade, manufacturing, especially electronics and pharmaceuticals, and tourism. Malta adopted the euro currency on 1 January 2008. Tourist arrivals and foreign exchange earnings derived from tourism have steadily increased since 1987. What is the population of Malta in 2020? 441,543 people. Malta 2020 population is estimated at 441,543 people at mid-year according to UN data. Malta population is equivalent to 0.01% of the total world population. Is Malta part of the British Commonwealth? British forces retained a presence in Malta until March 31, 1979, when their military bases on the island were closed. The islands became part of the British Commonwealth. Malta was part of the British Empire for over 150 years, so it is hardly surprising that business, laws and education have some British overtones. How many immigrants are in Malta? Of the total population of 475,701 persons in 2019, 98,918 or 21.0% are non-Maltese nationals. Most of the foreign community in Malta, predominantly active or retired British nationals and their dependents, is centered on Slimer and surrounding modern suburbs. What is Malta famous food? Traditional Maltese, food is rustic and based on the seasons. Look out for lampuki pie, fish pie, rabbit stew, bragioli, beef olives, caponata, Maltese version of ratatouille, and widow's soup, which includes a small round of gujanayat, sheep or goat's cheese. Where does the Queen stay in Malta? Villa Gardamangia. Villa Gardamangia, the palazzo-style mansion where Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip once lived, is now on the market for $6.7 million. If you ever wondered what it's like to live like royalty, and you have a couple million dollars sitting in the bank, now is your chance. Can I emigrate to Malta? Depending on where you are emigrating from, you can apply for one of two types of residency, the ordinary residence or the permanent residence. The difference between the two ultimately boils down to how much you are taxed. Ordinary residence applies to people coming to Malta from the European Union. How can I seek asylum in Malta? When seeking asylum in Malta, the only place to register an application is the Refugee Commissioner Office. Asylum seekers will complete a preliminary questionnaire, then the formal one that is filled with the caseworkers during the assessment interview. Is Malta good for shopping? Shopping is among the favorite activities on many a holidaymaker's to-do list. Malta offers numerous, and diverse opportunities, and is sure to satisfy the casual buyer as well as the serious shopaholic. Who were the first inhabitants of Malta? Phoenicians. At around the year 750 BC the Phoenicians settled in Malta. This maritime power based on trade and commerce referred to the island as Maleth, which means shelter. Is healthcare free in Malta? Most state healthcare services in Malta are free. Prescribed medicine is free when you're a hospital inpatient and for three days after you're discharged. After that, you pay for prescriptions. How much you pay depends on the medicine and is set by the Maltese government. What plug sockets do they have in Malta? Malta Travel Adapters. For Malta the associated plug type is G which is the plug that has three rectangular pins in a triangular pattern. Malta operates on a 230V supply voltage and 50 Hz. Are Maltese people white? The Maltese have had huge non-white sources to their population. 
But of course, you may consider North Africans and Semitic peoples to be white. However it is clear that, if Malta is not part of Europe, it is the closer one can get to it. Why is Malta not in Italy? Pre-independence relations. Malta was part of the Normans' kingdom of Sicily, and remained associated with the Italian kingdom until 1194. By 1813 the island became a British colony, and thus moved outside the Italian sphere, although the presence of Italian culture and language remained strong. Is Malta Arabic? Classification Maltese is descended from Siculo Arabic, a Semitic language within the Afroasiatic family, that in the course of its history has been influenced by Sicilian and Italian, to a lesser extent French, and more recently English. Malta is an archipelago in the central Mediterranean between Sicily and the North African coast. It's a nation known for historic sites related to a succession of rulers including the Romans, Moors, Knights of St. John, French and British. It has numerous fortresses, megalithic temples, and the al safliani Hypogeum, a subterranean complex of halls and burial chambers dating to circa 4000 BC. Malta, island country located in the central Mediterranean Sea. A small, but strategically important group of islands, the archipelago has through its long and turbulent history played a vital role in the struggles of a succession of powers for domination of the Mediterranean and in the interplay between emerging Europe and the older cultures of Africa and the Middle East. As a result, Maltese society has been mulled by centuries of foreign rule by various powers, including the Phoenicians, Romans, Greeks, Arabs, Normans, Sicilians, Swabians, Aragonese, Hospitallers, French, and British. The island of Malta specifically played a vital strategic role in World War II as a base for the Allied powers. It was heavily bombarded by German and Italian aircraft, and by the end of the war Malta was devastated. In 1942 the island of Malta was presented with the George Cross, a British award for great gallantry, in recognition of the wartime bravery of the Maltese people. After the war, the movement for self-governance became stronger. The country of Malta became independent from Britain and joined the Commonwealth in 1964 and was declared a republic on December 13, 1974. It was admitted to the European Union EU, in 2004. A European atmosphere predominates in Malta as a result of close association with the continent, particularly with southern Europe. The Maltese are renowned for their warmth, hospitality, and generosity to strangers, a trait that was noted in the Acts of the Apostles, with respect to the experience of St. Paul, the Apostle, who was said to have been shipwrecked off Malta in 60 CE. Roman Catholicism is a major influence on Maltese culture. Various traditions have evolved around religious celebrations, notably those honoring the patron saints of towns and villages. The eight-pointed, or Maltese, cross adopted by the Hospitallers of St. John of Jerusalem in 1126, is commonly linked with Malta's identity, and is printed on the country's euro coin. Valletta is the capital city. The country comprises five islands, Malta, the largest, Gozo, Comino, and the uninhabited islets of Kemunet, Cominotto, and Filfla, lying some 58 miles, 93 kilometers, south of Sicily, 180 miles, 290 kilometers, north of Libya, and about 180 miles, 290 kilometers, east of Tunisia. At the eastern end of the constricted portion of the Mediterranean Sea separating Italy from the African coast. The islands of Malta are dominated by limestone formations, and much of their coastlines consist of steep, or vertical limestone cliffs indented by bays, inlets, and coves. They lie on the submerged Malta Hybline platform, a wide undersea shelf bridge, that connects the Ragusa platform of southern Sicily with the Tripolitana platform of southern Libya. Malta Sunny and Safe Malta Gozo and Comino have been preparing to ensure that your next stay on the islands is pleasant, rewarding and safe. Gozo Island of Legends 
Gozo, meaning joy in Castilian, is the second largest island of the Maltese archipelago. With its relaxed pace of life, Gozo is the ideal getaway. Marsixlok Catch of the Day Marsixlok Bay is Malta's second largest natural harbour. It is the best place to see the colourful, traditional Maltese fishing boats the Luzas. The Mysterious Hypogeum The Hypogeum is a unique monument, recognised with an individual listing on the UNESCO list of World Heritage Sites. It's crowded. Malta is one of the most densely populated countries in the world, with 423,000 souls packed into an area one-tenth the size of Rhode Island and one-fifth the size of Greater London. Most live on the congested island of Malta, with a few more spread onto the Carmagozo, and the rest, all three of them, on Comino. But there's still space for visitors. Tourism took off in the early 1960s, and now accounts for 12% of Malta's GDP. Its photogenic, ancient cities, the capital, Valletta, is a UNESCO cultural heritage site, and turquoise lagoons and beaches keep travelers coming. The Knights put Malta on the map. Malta is the navel of the Mediterranean, floating in the sea between Sicily and Libya. An ancient temple-building civilization, later Phoenician, Roman, Arab, Norman, and Aragonese occupations all made some mark on Maltese culture, and left an impressive collection of UNESCO-anointed sites. Then for a couple of centuries from 1530, the Order of the Knights of St. John originally hospitalers recruited from Europe's noble families, accompanying pilgrims, during the Crusades ruled Malta, pulling it culturally towards Europe, and transforming it into a maritime power that gave the Ottomans a run for their money. The noble knights also, quite literally, furnished Malta with Europe's finest art and architecture. With the knights' power on the wane a couple of centuries later, Napoleon took the islands with little resistance. After two turbulent years of anticlerical French rule, the Catholic Maltese asked Britain for help kicking out the French. The Brits, sensing opportunity, obliged, and remained for 164 years until Malta became independent in 1964. Malta joined the European Union in 2004. Don't follow the white taxes, they are bad news. Locals give these a wide berth, for good reason. The white cabs at the airport are expensive, and the drivers are rude and slack about switching their meters on. It's smarter to use one of the cab companies that do online bookings. Ecabs and Johns are both reliable. Buses are a cheap alternative and cover almost everywhere, and there is a limited night service too. Malta also has one of the densest road networks in the world. Pastizzi is king. Maltese cuisine is Mediterranean-oriented, but the essential Maltese snack is the simple pasties, a lozenge-shaped, greasy, cholesterol-charged pastry filled with ricotta or peas. Pastizarigi are all over, but the Pastizzi Institution is the Crystal Palace Bar in Rabat, a hole in the wall that closes for only two hours each day during the week. A coffee and a couple of Pastizzi will cost a couple of dollars. But be warned that pasties is also a derogatory term and a euphemism for a woman's more intimate parts. Pastizzi might be one reason the Maltese rank high on the obesity scales worldwide, Maltese men rank 16th worldwide, and Maltese women are the most overweight in Europe. Pastizzi are not the only culprit, though. The Maltese are among Europe's most exercise-shy folk. Bunnies are food, not pets. Malta imports much of its food, so local fare has always been influenced by and adapted from outside cuisines especially Italian, Sicilian and North African. There is no official national dish, but a feast of stewed rabbit known as fencata comes close. Some believe the popularity of fencata is rooted in resistance to the hunting restrictions imposed by the Knights of St. John, then honed when the Maltese learned from French knights how to domesticate rabbits. Though there are hunted wild rabbits on the islands, 
these are usually lean and small. Rabbits for the table are more likely bred for the purpose. Variations include Stuffet Tau Fennec, Rabbit Stew, Fennec Mokli a fried rabbit, and Spaghetti Bizalza Tau Fennec, spaghetti in rabbit sauce. Restaurants specializing in rabbit are found in Ma and Berija in the north of Malta, and there is the legendary Charlie's Inn in Salina, more affectionately known as Charlie Elmamug, unhygienic Charlie. It's best not to talk politics. The Maltese take their politics seriously, and both the Labour and Nationalist parties have a large and loyal following. Election turnouts are super high, and there is a party office slash club in every town and village. A lot of Maltese follow their party like a football club, through thick and thin. There were some politico-religious skirmishes in the 1960s and some violent incidents in the 1980s, but while these tensions have subsided, some bitter memories remain. When election time comes, some establishments prohibit all talk of politics, even putting up signs forbidding it. Malta has a church for every day of the year. That's what they say, but the number is actually somewhere around 359. Still, it's a big number for such a small country, more than one for each square kilometer. Malta's language is rooted in its Arab past, but day-to-day -day culture has a big Roman Catholic footprint. Luke the Apostle and Paul of Tarsus were shipwrecked off Malta in 60 AD, and Paul is credited with introducing Christianity to the islands and making Malta one of the earliest outposts of the faith. Catholicism is still serious business in Malta, abortions are illegal, and church attendance is among the highest in Europe. This enthusiasm is reflected both in the outsized number of churches, and their Baroque ostentation, mostly funded by parishioners themselves. And they're not just any churches, St. John's Cathedral in Valletta is a wonder to behold, and owns two Caravaggios, including his largest and only signed work, which is proudly displayed in the church's oratory. In summer, you can't avoid the festa. All Maltese towns and villages celebrate their patron saint in style, with week-long activities leading up to feast day, which climaxes with a procession, music, and fireworks. The most impressive fireworks displays are in the south of the island, where the villages of Zuriek, Mkaba, Krendi, Gaksak, and Gita compete fiercely. Santa Marija in August brings fireworks geeks from all over, because several feasts are celebrated simultaneously, naturally with fireworks befitting the occasion. Malta's bathing waters are the cleanest in Europe. This is thanks to sewage treatment plants part financed by the EU. But the most popular sandy beaches are near large hotels, and can get quite crowded in summer, Camino's famed Blue Lagoon is swarmed with day trippers during weekends. Gozo has just one large sandy beach, but is blessed with a good number of secluded rocky coves. Garjan Barani, also in Gozo, is a good candidate for a secluded beachy getaway, a perfectly flat rock shelf with some huge boulders that provide welcome shade. There are no amenities, and it's a kilometer, just over half a mile, on foot to get there, the last part on clay slopes. Blissfully, it's not signposted either. There will be noise. Lord Byron is said to have called Malta the island of yells, bells, and smells. Whether he really said this is disputed, but it may have stuck, because it's accurate on the bells at least. Deafening petards are let off as early as 8 a.m. on feast days, and can go on, in healthy disregard for local laws, past 11 p.m. church bell ringing starts as early as 7 a.m. on feast days. Gas delivery trucks honk loudly to announce their presence, and vans selling donuts go one worse with a loud hailer playing a pre-recorded sales pitch. Most Maltese seem to naturally talk loudly, and like their Italian neighbors, talk with their hands, and gesticulate, even while driving. The gesticulating is mostly non-aggressive, even if it does not appear that way. Malti is the only Semitic language written in Latin script. The distinctive Maltese language is also the only Semitic origin language, officially recognized as a European Union tongue, 
and provides translation work for many Maltese expats in Brussels. It is an ancient language descended from Siculo Arabic, an Arabic dialect that developed in Sicily, then Malta, with a sprinkling of English, Italian, and French words. Malta loves cars. The number of cars in Malta is staggering. At the last count, there were 337,000 motor vehicles, and around 50 new car licenses are issued daily. Car maintenance is a refined art, and old models such as the Hillman Minx, Volkswagen Beetle, and the Triumph Herald are still around. The original 1970s Escort MK1 is a cult car in Malta, and British Bedford trucks from the 1950s and 1960s still make rounds selling household items or paraffin. Until public transport was overhauled in 2011, some of the buses were over 50 years old, and most of the bus bodies were built locally, with vernacular decoration added in the form of finely painted designs and script called Tverfil. You can become Maltese at a price. Malta raised eyebrows in 2013, when it launched its international investment program, making it possible for anyone with enough cash to become a Maltese citizen and therefore snag a European Union passport. The criteria include passing a fit and proper test, contributing €650,000 into a national development and social fund, making an investment in property of at least €350,000 or investing €150,000 in bonds or shares approved by the Maltese government to be kept for at least five years. Immigration is a sensitive topic. Thanks to its location, over the last decade Malta has been a way station for migrants departing from the North African coast, mostly Libya, on rickety boats, hoping to get to mainland Europe. In 2012, Malta received the highest number of asylum seekers for its population. The Maltese are divided on the issue. Some have dubbed this Malta's third siege, the first was when the Knights of St. John withstood the Ottoman forces in 1565, and the second during World War II, when Malta was bombarded by the Italians, and then the Germans, and some feel that the European Union should have a fairer burden-sharing policy, because Malta is tiny, and already crowded. There were some public protests against illegal immigration, but these are now discouraged, and condemned by all political parties. Popeye lived here. Malta has often served as a backdrop for Hollywood movies. Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie closed off a whole beach to build a film set for the upcoming film by the sea. Game of Thrones scenes were shot all over, and Russell Crowe battled tigers at Fort Ricasoli in Gladiator. But there's also a more permanent film settlement. In 1980, Set designers built an entire pirate's village, for Robert Altman's musical Popeye adaptation, with a bald Robin Williams in the title role. The movie had mixed reviews, but the surreal Sweet Haven village still stands, and is open for visitors. Where to get away from the crowd? The Maltese do not generally indulge in leisure walking, so large stretches of the countryside are usually people-free. Magistral Park in the north is a silent refuge six times the size of Valletta, with a labyrinthine boulder scree. Almost all of the island of Gozo is quieter and greener, and some Maltese now have a second weekend home there just to escape the crowd on the main island.